Hello students, this is Jayashree and in our previous video we discussed about the discovery of cell, right? So in this video we are going to see how to prepare a temporary slide or temporary mount of onion peel. Now why we need to prepare a temporary slide? Suppose if I want to see the cells of onion, so what I have to do? Can I take this onion bulb directly and place it in the microscope and visualize it? No. I won't be able to see the cells to that clarity and I won't be able to get the details of cells. So more or less it will be waste, right? So if I have to study onion cells, I need to prepare the temporary slides. So what is the procedure? So the first step is we need an onion bulb. So this is one onion bulb, right? So what we have to do, we need to cut the onion and once we cut this onion, we are going to get many pieces. So here I have one piece with me, okay? Now you can see this is the convex side of the onion and this is the concave side of the onion. Now with the help of forceps, we need to carefully peel out the inner skin. So, this is how it comes out. Okay. And immediately we need to transfer this peel into a watch glass containing water. Now the question arises, why need to put this onion peel in water? So as we all know that most of the living cells, they require water to maintain their good health or to survive, I can say. So in the absence of water, this, these cells which are present in this portion, they are going to shrink, they are going to dry out, they are going to lose their original shape, size and things like that. And we want the cells to retain their original shape, right? So for that we need to keep our cells hydrated. So that's the reason we have to immediately transfer this peel of skin into a watch glass containing water. So I didn't have the watch glass, so I have transferred it into a petri dish containing some water. Now, the next step is we need to add a drop of saffronin stain into this. Now, why we need to add the stain? We want to see the cells very clearly, right? We want to distinguish one part of the cell from another part. For that, we need to add the stain. Now, when we add the stain, what actually happens is that the different parts of the cell, they absorb the stain by different extent depending upon their chemical composition. So, what I want to convey over here is that the cell wall and the cytoplasm and for that matter nucleus, anything if you consider all these three things, they have different chemical composition so depending upon the chemical composition they are going to take more stain or less stain so we are going to see the cells in the grades of color so here in this case we are using saffronin stain so which is going to be uh, reddish to pink in color so if you add that stain finally your cells are going to appear pinkish to red in color so as you can see some part will be darkly stained some part will be lightly stained now another thing what we need to remember is that other than saffronin stain also we can go for methylene blue so if we use methylene blue your cells are going to appear in the shades of blue if you use iodine, your cells are going to appear in the shades of brown. That is some part will be darker brown, some part will be light brown in color. That's it. Now, so the moment you add a drop of stain, after that you need to gently mix it and wait for about one minute. Now this time is important because we want the cells to take the stain. However, we should not allow over staining of the cells also okay so after about one minute we need to again take the forceps and cut it into small piece and we are going to take 
a small portion of this and then we are going to transfer it into a glass slide so this is my glass slide and just consider this pink thing to be the peel of onion which we have taken and this blue color what i have just shaded that is water so again remember we are transferring into a glass slide and again that glass slide is containing a drop of water again the purpose of water is to keep the cells hydrated and after this next step is to put a cover slip so we carefully put a cover slip taking care not to trap any air bubbles now why we need to add this cover slip what is the purpose now first and foremost thing is that the cover slip will prevent this sample from drying or i can say it will prevent the cells from drying okay second thing it will remove the excess of water and stain so if you happen to perform this experiment you will be able to clearly notice that the moment you put this cover slip all the extra water and stain whatever will be there that is going to come and just it is going to collect over here and then with the help of a blotting paper you can just wipe it out okay so that is the next important reason why we need to use the cover slip okay and third important thing is that this cover slip also helps to uh, maintain the position of this onion specimen so we know that the sample what we have taken it is on water so there is a great chance that it may move this side that side making our focusing difficult right so the sample will be held at a proper place by this cover slip so these are the three important things why we have to use this cover slip so i hope now it is clear for you why we need to add water at this stage why we are using a stain and why we are using the cover slip and once your slide is prepared it is ready to be observed now you can observe it using the light microscope or student's microscope what is available in your laboratory and when we are going to observe it we are going to notice long rectangular shaped cells so these are the onion cells which are present in the bulb of the onion okay and as you can see each of the cell it has its own distinct cell wall right and in each of the cell we are going to see a dark stained component that is nothing but your nucleus so nucleus it appears in the as a dark dot because it takes too much of stain again why because of its chemical composition and other than this this portion what you can see which i have just uh, Mm, painted in light pink this is basically the cytoplasm now if you carefully observe in each of these cells the nucleus is not at the center why the reason is that in plant cells generally there is a big vacuole and that vacuole is going to push the nucleus towards the side so basically if you can see it this is the nucleus and next to it actually we will have a big vacuole and all around is your cytoplasm so you are going to see basically when you are going to visualize it using microscope you are going to see this nucleus you are going to see the cytoplasm you are going to see the uh, cell wall and obviously the shape of cell will be very clear so these are set of observations which i have just jotted down over here for our understanding now i have one uh, not one actually two questions for you suppose there are two students okay and one out of them prepares a slide using this onion and another student he prepares a slide using this onion now my question to you is that will there be any difference in the cell size what they are going to observe 
after their slide preparation? The answer is no. Now, what we have to keep in our mind is that whether it is this onion or this onion, the two have almost same cells. Now, same cells, when I say I mean the cells are almost of the same shape are of this almost same size. Now, what makes the difference in the two is the number of cells. So, this is big, not because it has big cells, but rather because it has large number of cells when we compare it with the small onion. So, now, I have one more question to you. Now, suppose there are three students this time. Now, one of them, he prepares a slide of onion leaves. Okay. Another one, he prepares the slide using the onion root. And there is a third student. He is going to prepare a slide using the bulb portion. Now, again, my question remains the same. That is now... This time, whether there will be difference in the cells, what they are going to observe? The answer is yes. Now, as we know that the leaf has different role in plant and the roots have different role. The purpose of leaf is to prepare food. Now, for root, it is absorption of nutrients and the bulb basically stores the food now, each of the three have different functions so to perform that function their shape get modified the components what they contain will be also slightly different in some cases however one thing what we have to remember is that whether it is a cell from leaf or root or bulb of onion, in all the three cases, we are going to see cell wall because cell wall is one of the characteristic property of the plant cells. So all of them will have cell wall. All of them will have nucleus. All of them will have cytoplasm. The only thing which is going to vary is the cell size will vary and the cell shape will vary. Okay, so that's all for this video. Thank you. Do like, subscribe and share this video.